Ivan, this Jeep SRT is looking worse for wear. And we're here to help it. I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. And this is DIY Detail. We have a Jeep here that yeah, needs a bit of love. And we're gonna do that. We're gonna start by foaming it. We're gonna cover it in a white blanket of incredible suds. After that, we're gonna clay it to get all the embedded contamination off. Then we're gonna polish it with a special way and finish it off with our five year high gloss ceramic coating. Some people like to just dive right in. Other people like to look at the roadmap. And I exactly. gave you the roadmap. Uh, I do want to tell you the map that we're going to be traveling on right. is a water spotted looking black car that I think is black but looks more gray, right? Right. So it's a metallic look. Yeah, exactly. We want to get rid of everything on the surface, yeah. see what's underneath there, decontaminate the paint, polish it, and protect it. Exactly. And that's what we're gonna do. So let's go for it. Boom. While Nick is getting the pressure washer ready, I have all clean diluted 15 to one in our IK foamer. Gonna foam it on the wheels and tires and actually over the whole vehicle. Why are we doing it over the whole vehicle? We wanna make sure we're getting rid of any waxes or sealants that could be on there. And this foam is gonna help break that down. The all clean is dwelling. Nick has the bucket ready. He's got the foamer ready. We're gonna just gonna foam right over top of the all clean. The reason we're doing that, we don't wanna do a two bucket wash method. That takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. This is actually faster. We're doing a two foam wash method. So we're gonna foam it. Let it dwell a minute or two, rinse it off, foam it again. Then we have all the lubrication we need on the surface for the contact wash. We've taken all the grit off of the surface already. So off you go. So this is one wheel. It's definitely worth it to do the barrels. You can see them plain as day all the time. And there's a lot of room to get in there too. When Ivan's doing barrels, you know it's a very important reason. You have to do them. I mean, they're so visible. Yeah, exactly. Is this where I help you with the wheels? If you'd like to. Oh, well, that's fair enough. We can share the, the burden, the load, the fun. So as the foam is dwelling, it's taking down all the grit that was on this vehicle. It's making it so that when we rinse it off, it's basically clean. The only thing left on the surface at this point will be traffic film. And once we get rid of that traffic film, then we go to the contact wash. When's your preferred time, Ivan, to apply iron remover to a wheel face? To a wheel face, we could have done it here. But these ones actually, we know the customer uses iron remover on a regular basis, so it's not that big of a deal. The wheels, even though they look dusty, they're not really dirty. They don't have a lot of heavy brake dust because we don't see a lot of brake dust coming off of them with the foam. Yeah, it's pretty rare to be able to get so far into these. Yeah. <laughs> like when you can get into the wheel with a regular wheel and body brush, Instead of the spoke brush, you know that you're, you've got a lot of space there. So when we started this, Nick filled up the foam cannon and he might have put a little more than one ounce of incredible suds in here. So I just added more water. Didn't add any more incredible suds. I don't think we need it. Because knowing Nick, well, you know how he is. Sometimes he tends to a little overcompensate on stuff. I can hear you, Ivan. I know. <laughs> it's true. So he's almost done with the wheels. We can get the pressure washers set up to rinse this off. So back with the foam cannon. This is just a quick foaming, just to give us a little more lubrication on the surface. Always a good practice. Every time you're gonna foam, just foam, rinse, foam again and then contact wash. Exactly. So we're not going for shaving cream here. 
We're just going for lubrication on the surface. And you just added water last time. Yeah, I just added water. Smart man. I know I'm who I'm working with, so I know there's <laughs> maybe a little tad too much soap in the first one. This is pretty luxurious foam on round two as well. Exactly. For not adding any product. Nick has done the contact wash. I'm gonna go over with our iron remover. Let's get the sprayer lined up. There we go. I just need to hit the roof. Okay. What I also love about doing the foam cannon incredible suds wash is you can tell where you've been. It's very visible. Exactly. And having foamed, rinsed, and foamed again Basically, we're actually doing a better job than the two bucket method. The reason behind that, the two bucket method, you're still taking grit off the car and bringing it back to the bucket. This way, we've washed the grit off the car. Now we're just left with traffic film. And speaking of grit on the car, there might be some contamination. We're gonna be polishing and coating this, so we wanna treat it to the best we can. That means one spray of iron remover on the panel, one spray on my towel. Where I sprayed it on the panel is where I deposit the towel. And then I gently go over the panel using both the iron remover and the incredible suds as lubrication. No pressure on the towel and getting rid of any contamination on the surface. Making sure I get the windows as well, the tail lights, you name it, it's all fair game. Ooh, there's a lot of contamination down here. With this SRT Jeep, there's a good chance a burnout may have happened at some point. It's just that kind of vehicle. I mean, you don't want to get a vehicle like this if you're gonna drive like a grandma. No. Or at least I wouldn't think so. No, it just, first of all, from a gearhead like I am, it sounds beautiful. As much as electric cars have that phenomenal acceleration, all that fun stuff, just the, the vibrancy, the beautiful melody of a big V8 engine at full song. Don't think I'm ever gonna get over that. And while I'm here, I'm also gonna clay the windows. And we say clay. In reality, we're not using clay in any way, shape, or form. A perforated synthetic decontamination towel. It's a bit of a long word, that's why we say clay towel, but a perforated synthetic decontamination towel, when used properly, will not mar or scratch the surface. Unlike the old clay bars, clay bars were actually an abrasive. There's no abrasives in this whatsoever. Ivan, you say used properly. When I hear that, all I can think of is no pressure. No pressure, let the clay, or let the towel do the work, not you. If it feels like you're working with most of the DIY products, because you're doing something wrong. When you've done one of the, let's say, grittier sections of the vehicle, like the lowers, go back into the bucket, dip your perforated synthetic decontamination towel, and start over again. And while you're watching us do this, this would be a great time to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and even give us a thumbs up. We appreciate all of that. Also, let us know what your thoughts are on this rig here on this SRT, over or underrated? Actually, I think I've got a better question, Nick. Okay. Especially for the older guys in the room. High performance, naturally aspirated V8, supercharged V8, or EV? What's your choice? I'm a fan of the naturally, naturally aspirated V8. Just the sound of it, the throttle response, all that fun stuff. Now, like I said, I love the acceleration of an EV, but it's 
almost soulless. Ivan, have you done the um, front windshield yet? Uh, not on the driver's side. Okay. Well, I have a new clay towel here and I want to break it in on windows, so that's perfect. Exactly. Anytime you get one of these new synthetic perforation decontamination towels. Perforated synthetic decontamination towel. You want to break it in on the windows. Right, exactly. By breaking it in, basically, there's a little layer on top of it that is there for shipping. You want to break that off, or you want to break through it. Do you go flat like this? Does it matter? I fold it in four and then do all four sides. Okay. But you can do flat. Basically, you just want to move it over the glass a little bit with some lubrication, which Nick has more than enough of with the incredible suds. And the leftover iron remover. Which I'm hitting the, the same windows with again. Yeah. Just to make sure I've got it on the towel. Then I'll meet you on the roof for a little help in the clay stage. I love Incredible Suds as your base for iron remover. It has a ton of lubrication. I know rinse this wash is probably your favorite, Ivan. Oh, both actually do a, a good job. What's nice about the uh, Incredible Suds is, like you mentioned before, you see exactly where you've been. Yep. Don't underestimate the power of the simple things, you know? Especially if a customer calls in the middle of your detail or your kid walks out in the driveway. We're all human. And as important as detailing cars is, sometimes things get in the way. There's distractions once in a while. The towel feels pretty broken in. I'm gonna be real gentle on the roof here and dip some more incredible suds in. And the roof is almost all glass anyways, so. Well, that's perfect. And again, I don't know why right behind this rear wheel seems almost chunky. I have to find out from the owner if burnouts have been involved in the life of this vehicle at any point. Maybe a drag strip run here or there. These are fun on the drag strip. You know that from experience, huh? Yes, I do actually. Would you ever own a Jeep SRT? I know you like Jeeps. Yes, uh, but you know, I'm at a stage in my life where I'm divesting instead of investing. So, quite the minimalist. I only have one vehicle now. I used to have 10. So, back in the day when I had a collection of vehicles, this would have been a good candidate for part of that collection. You had 10 vehicles? Yes. Wow. New ones, old ones, classics, high performance, luxury, anywhere in between. You slowly sold them off or what happened? Sold them all off to move into a bus. Oh. Kind of hard to drive 10 vehicles everywhere you go. When did you move into the bus? 2019. Permanently, but a lot of time was spent part-time from 2016 forward. What surprised you about moving into a bus full-time? That you don't need as much stuff as you think you do. What's the number one thing people hold on to too much? Everything. Junk. Uh, There's a lot of things that we carry around in our life that we really don't need. Now I have a full bay in my bus dedicated to detailing supplies, but... Your bus is pretty big, I mean. Yeah. When you include the storage at the bottom. Right. We have a basement, so... And there we go. Now since we're done with this wash bucket, we're just going to put these in here. Done. If you're continuing with your wash bucket, rinse them off get them wet. We're gonna let them sit in there for a few minutes. Then when we're all done, we'll rinse them out with fresh water, hang them up to dry. Clay side up. Clay side up, and we're good. Now it's time to rinse it off. Now I'm more of a drying blanket man myself, but Ivan, it's your lucky day three twist loop towels to dry the car. Yeah, probably only need one, but anyways, I like to have one in each hand. Kind of unnecessary, but I like a couple sprays of panel prep as a drying aid. I know we're gonna polish this paint. I just really love being able to see what I'm polishing, but again, that's kind of an unnecessary, choose your own adventure kind of step. What are your thoughts on panel prep as a drying aid before polishing, Ivan? Great idea, but for myself, I know we're gonna be polishing it and we're gonna be using panel prep afterwards. So it may be a slightly unneeded step. But for me, if there's a chance to use more product, what do I do? You use twice as much. I go for it, man. Yeah. 
send it. Grow mullet, check. I could go bald next year, you know? And then I'm gonna say to myself, I never grew a mullet. I'm sure that's a regret you have, Ivan. I never grew a mullet, and I don't regret that in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> okay. So black paint is a very interesting discussion. As a detailer, I usually tell people I would never get black paint, but of course it looks amazing. And as a 40-year detailer, you love black paint. You've had many black cars. Can you explain that? Yeah, so I had exclusively black cars for 30 years. Why? Because a clean black car is as good looking as you can get. So you like living in that, in that moment, understanding that nothing is permanent. Oh, it's definitely not permanent. You know, one, uh, one friend of mine described it as a white car is a one night stand, a black car is a long term marriage. Explain. You're married to a black car, you always have to clean it. A one night stand, you clean that white car once a year and it's good. For a lot of people, that's actually how they think. Interesting metaphor there, Ivan. Yeah. But a black car, you're married. If you want to keep it looking good, it's like any good marriage. Constant maintenance, constant work. And that's not a bad thing. It's just you're committing to that when you get a black car. Exactly. And constant reward, too. That is so interesting you put it that way. Yeah, and it's like, okay, I can tell you that sometimes the car gets away from me and I don't wash it for a few weeks. And how bad would it look then? But it's like, that's more of a lens into well, what's going on in your life that you're not able to wash it that often. Where are your priorities at? Right, and for myself, <laughs> I like taking the time to wash my car. It's fun, it's relaxing, it's enjoyable. There's joy that comes out of it. Is that why you decided to start a company that's called DIY Detail? Well, that's one of them, yeah. Now you'll notice we're not going for perfection in drying because our polish actually doesn't interfere with water. So if there's a bit of water on the surface, it's not a big deal. As you can see, Nick is using the throw the drying blanket on the roof method, which is a great way of using the drying blanket. You don't need to crawl up on ladders. I threw it too far, Ivan. Threw it too far? Can you reach it? Yes, sir. There you go. Well, thanks. We'll do a little drying on the way down. And with that, Nick, we're gonna inspect the paint. We're gonna polish it to see how far we need to go with it. And we're gonna coat it. But that's gonna happen in another video. But if you like to see this type of video, there's a lot more of them right around here. Mm -hmm.